Welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we are going to set up some foundations for our action bar saves. We're also going to set up the inventory save and uh, basically just see how far we can get. So in your systems folder, you're going to right click, create a new folder and let us call this one save system. Inside of save system, we are going to have another folder, which I'm going to call structs and enums. And also before we go into there, we're going to right click and click blueprint, blueprint class and add a save game object. I'm going to call this one my save game. Let us head into structs and enums and right click, go to blueprint and structure. The first structure I'm going to make is st underscore inventory save. And the second one is going to be a st underscore action bar settings. Now over on inventory save first. This is a very simple one. We're just going to add an integer, which is going to contain our ID. We're then going to have a contents and a hotkeys. So our contents is going to be SD underscore inventory contents, and that's an array, as you know. And the hotkeys is, of course, a key variable. And that is an array as well. Now you can save that and close out. Go into your action bar settings and inside of the action bar settings, we're going to add a integer, which is going to be an ID. We're going to add a Boolean for enabled. We're going to add a integer for max slots. Another integer for max horizontal slots. We're going to add four floats. So the first one is going to be Vert padding, vertical padding. Second one is going to be hor padding, horizontal padding. Third one is going to be slot opacity. And the last one is going to be action bar scale. Now we're going to add a vector to D. Which is going to contain our position. Then we're going to add a key binds which is of course our key variable. And that's an array. We're gonna add a Boolean, which is action bar name enabled. And then we're gonna add a text. That Boolean is not a array, by the way. Then we're gonna add a text, which is also not an array. And that's gonna be action bar name. And the final one is our bar name rotation. That is gonna be used mainly for us, but you can also add it into the system if you want. You can save that and close out. Let us send it into our save game object. Inside of our save game object, we're going to add those two structures. So st underscore inventory save struct. And that is our inventory save. That is going to be an array. Then we can do a st underscore action bar settings which is st underscore action bar settings. Now you can compile that and close out of your save game. Inside your base folder, inside your game instance, let us head there for a second. Because now we need to set up some stuff. The first thing we want to do is add a event initialize. And here we want to check if our save game exists. So does save game exist? I'm going to call it my save game. And that goes into a branch. I'm going to copy the slot name. If it doesn't exist, well, we want to create save game object. It's going to be my save game. Then I want to promote that to a variable. I'm going to call it my save game object. In here, I want to get my inventory save struct. And I want to promote that to a variable, which is going to be called the same. I'm also going to get my object again, and I'm going to get my action bar settings. And I'm going to promote that as well. Then I can get my save game object and I can save game to slot. Slot name is the one we copied, which did not copy anymore because we copied our save game object. Now our save game struct thing object, I think, yeah. And now we can save that game to slot. However, if it is true, well, we want to load game. I'm going to load my save game. I'm going to cast it. 
my save game and then we want to set our my save game object again like so then we want to get our information and load it so get inventory save struct and set it to the game instances one or set the game instances one to the incoming one from the save game i'm going to do the same with the action bar settings set action bar settings like so and that should be it for that let us add the save inventory first of all so let's add a new custom in custom here i'm going to call this one save inventory when we save inventory we're simply going to get our save game object and we're going to set uh, uh, inventory save struct to the one we have here on our game instance then we want to save game to slot and the slot is my save game we're going to add another one as well which is our save action bars and it's going to do exactly the same thing i believe we're going to set action bar settings to be that of our action bar settings and then save that game to slot as well and that is it for our game instance now let us go into our ac inventory component and in here we're going to make a new function i'm going to call it save inventory now save inventory is going to get our game instance ref so do we have that yeah and we're going to get our inventory save struct we're going to do a for each loop with break and we're going to break the array element we're going to check if the id is equal to well our id and if that is true we're going to break out going to a second branch just in case the loop continues with and not finding anything before it ends it uncompleted If it is true, that means we've found the inventory so we can update the array element at the index that we found it at. So we can get our inventory save struct. We can set array element. So this is over on true. And we can set that to the array index here. So I'm gonna promote this to local. So local index. And I'm gonna plug it into the loop like so. And the index goes into there. We can expand this item. And now we can set our ID in, like so. The contents is our contents, and the hotkeys is our hotkeys. We size that to fit, and then we want to call our save inventory from our game instance. This will happen every time that we call our save inventory function. If it is false, however, that means that we haven't found any. So we want to add an element to the array and we want to just add it out anywhere it doesn't have to be any specific slot we want to add the id hotkey and contents like we did previously and then we want to save that inventory and return that is our save inventory now we can go into our set item info index this is where i usually put it when i set the item info index after i update the slot i'm going to save the inventory now we can head into our event graph and here we have our load inventory and our load inventory we're going to duplicate our save so load inventory we're going to loop see if the id is the same if it is we're going to break out and we're going to remove this so if this is true well it means we can set our contents to be that of the the contents here so we're going to get since we have the local index available we can get a copy now at the local index like so we can break this open and that is going to give us our contents and we can set our hotkeys and that has loaded our inventory if we don't break out well then we don't have nothing to load so we're just going to continue going on head over here remove your load inventory and place the function this should be it for our loading of inventories it is not so let's figure out why that is so it is creating it oh, okay 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 okay. let's go into our slot widget on our graph on our event graph 
like so. On our construct, let us update the slot. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Okay, let's update the slot and that should take care of that. Yeah, beautiful. So now we have a saved inventory. Unfortunately, this took a bit long. Uh, we are gonna set up some stuff though. Let us set the action bars quickly before we head off. Uh, this might actually take a little bit of time, but let us just set them up so that they are there. Go to our third person character. And in here, we're going to add inventory. I'm gonna call this one AB1. Now AB1 is gonna have 12 slots. 12 max horizontal, so it's going to be a horizontal box. It's going to have ID of 2, and I'm going to call this one AB1. I'm going to duplicate that, and this is my AB2. It's going to be called AB2, and it's going to have an ID of 3. AB3 is going to have an ID of 4 and be called AB3. It's going to have max slot of 12 and max horizontal of 1. Same with this one, except that its name is AB4 and the ID is 5. Same with this one, except that the ID is six and the name is five. And the last one is gonna be called AB6 and the ID is seven. Now let us head into our HUD. On our HUD, we wanna add these. So get your uh, action bar. Have we made an action bar yet? No, we haven't. Let us go into our AB systems and then let's make an action bar system folder. Open that up. Now our action bar is gonna be consisting of a copy of our inventory system. So go, go to your inventory system interface and our WBP inventory. Duplicate that, call it WBP action bar. And then let's move that into our action bar system. I'm gonna make a interface folder here where I'm gonna put it. Let's open it up. And let's change how this looks. So we want to just get rid of everything for now. We're going to do a border. Now this border is going to have a color of uh, an alpha of 0.5. It's going to be variable and it's going to be called my click border. Then I'm going to add a canvas. Now this click border also doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't want to be hit testable. I want to add a canvas. Canvas can be visible. I want to add a uniform grid panel, which I'm going to make variable. I'm going to call it action bar, unif grid panel. I'm going to size that to content and I'm going to set slot padding to one. It's going to be not hit testable. And then I'm going to add a text to our canvas, which I'm going to call my action bar, header, name, text. It's going to be variable. Size it to content. And I'm gonna dummy this name as AB1. I'm gonna make it regular and 16. And then I'm gonna angle it 90 degrees. Let's head into our graph and into our generate inventory. Now on our generate inventory, we do wanna get the settings of the action bar before we actually create it. So let us make it a function which is what we're going to call get settings. And inside of here, we're going to get our HUD ref, get game instance ref, get the settings, and then do a for each with break. We're going to check the element, break that open and check the ID is equal to our inventory refs ID. that is true, we're going to break. And if this is true, then we're going to return with an output, which is going to be a ST action bar settings structure, which we're going to call loaded settings. And that is our array index, our uh, element, sorry. We go back to generate now, and we can get AB settings. After we get AB settings, we wanna get our action bar uniform grid panel. Change out that one. Gonna get our slot graphs is fine. Our hotkeys can now be disconnected like so, and we can get our settings instead. So 
and break our settings open here. And we can get our key binds into that get node. Inventory ref. We can also hold down control and drag this max horizontal node over to the loaded max horizontal nodes. And then get our action board and uniform grid panel once more. It could not find the variable inventory name text. Uh, that is because it is not here. Uh, it is called our action bar header unit frame now. But also we're not setting it here, so we can just remove that and compile. Now let's head into our HUD. But for HUD, we are going to add our action bars. I'm going to make that a size to content. I'm going to call it my AB1. Now AB1 is going to be size to content and everything is fine. AB2 is going to be duplicated and it's going to be moved. So it's going to rename first and then it's going to be moved 100 units up like so. Duplicate AB3. Hold down control and shift and anchor it to the right. AB4. It's going to be moved uh, 100 units to the left on the x-axis. AB5. Anchor it to the left. And AB6. Rename. And uh, it's going to be 100 units out. Like so. If you press play now, it's nothing's really going to work because uh, our inventory doesn't work. Go into our graph and let us set up our HUD refs. So we are actually going to move the HUD refs in front of all of these. We're going to get our AB1, AB2, AB3, AB4, AB5, and AB6. Then we're going to set HUD ref. And I might skip ahead on this. I'm just setting the hard reps of all of these. And AB6, like so. Now I'm going to remove this self. And I'm going to plug this into the chain. And then I'm going to get our self in at the start here. Once we have done that, we can generate our action bars. So I'm going to get my AB1. Actually, I'm going to just take these. And I'm going to drag out from AB1 and I'm going to generate inventory. And I'm going to set these up as well. I'm not going to do the inventory ref until after. So I'm going to skip ahead until I'm there. Then we want to get an inventory. So we're going to get a player ref. Get AB1 for AB1. Get AB2 for AB2. Get AB3 for AB3. And I'm going to split them up into three. So like this. And then I'm going to get AB6. This is now generating our action bars. Hopefully it didn't though. Uh, and that is probably a good reason for that. Let's be fair. Let us try to figure out why that is though. Uh, does it get added properly? Probably not because our max horizontal is probably wrong. Inside of our game instance, no, inside of our uh, save game, let's go into action bar settings and let's add all of these array elements. So we want to add until we have seven elements. And we're going to add some defaults uh, things here. So the first one, the first action bar is ID 2. It's going to start as enabled, 12 max, 12 max horizontal, 0 vert, 0 horror, 1 opacity, 1 scale. And then I'm going to set it to a number that I've found work for me. I'm going to set it in 640 by 960. I'm going to set some five default key binds on this bar. Not the other bars, but only on this one. I'm just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to do action bar enabled name. Name is going to be AB1. And bar rotation is going to be zero. And we're just going to keep doing it until we are satisfied. So it's going to be ID3 enabled. 12, 12, 0, 0, 1, 1. And the location for this is 640 by 832. It's going to enable the name called AB2. The 
the next one is ID 4 enabled 12 1 1 1 and then we're gonna do 1856 by 128 name enabled AB3 and it's gonna have a bar name rotation of 90 degrees now the next one is ID 5 enabled 12 1 0 0 1 1 position 17 92 by 128 name enabled AB4 and bar name rotation of 90 index 4 is going to be ID uh, 6 enabled 12 1 0 0 1 1 64 by 128 enabled AB5 and negative 90 degrees angle. This is going to be ID7. It's going to be enabled. It's going to be 12, 1, I'm actually 0 there and 1 there. 1, 1. It's going to be positioned at 128, 128. And this is going to be enabled. AB6. And the name rotation is going to be negative 90 on that as well. So that is it for that. However, we are also going to well, our index six here. That is going to be our M entry itself. So we want to just do ID one enabled. And then here we just want to basically have it for the positioning later on. So that is our save game. Now we're going to remove our save game. Now if we hit play, now we have our ABs up and running. These should all honestly just be fully functioning at this point as an inventory. And they are. This uh, episode has turned quite long already. In the next one, we are going to continue on with our uh, action bars, I guess, and uh, finishing some bugs and stuff that we should probably have. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you feel like you want to support me. And uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.